Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com. And um, in this um, mentee interview, uh, Forex mentee interview, I've got uh, another trader uh, by the name of Lawrence. Welcome, Lawrence. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Leon. Good afternoon. Oh, well, yeah. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. So, um, again, Lawrence, you've been with me for, for a little bit, and I wanted to get your, um, I guess, experience of being in the Trading 180, um, you know, mentoring Discord group. Um, I know you've been doing, you know, really well with the trading, and you've become, you know, you've come leaps and bounds as to, uh, you know, your trading and your results and stuff like that. And uh, I'm very impressed um, by your analysis, both fundamentally and technically. So um, let's, uh, I guess, just start the, uh, the, the interview by saying, um, getting a bit about your background and how you got into Forex trading and how long have you been trading? Yes, so thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk a little bit about myself. So now for my background, I come from something totally different from finance. So I come from, I have a chemical background. So I study chemistry and plus of that, I also study food technology. So something totally different from okay. uh, forest market or totally different from international finance. But what made me come to this field is very simple. I, I used to watch on TV. So every 8 p.m., I used to watch foreign channels. And usually when I will watch the TV, the journal, at some point, there is a special time slot for financial market. It was really, really fascinating for me. So when I used to see people <laughs> analysis and so showing graphs, I will always ask myself, which kind of field is it? Which kind of subject do I have to study to be able to analyze the market like those guys? So they are talking about, okay, this country is doing good. The stock market is, doing, is going down today. Stock market is going up. Today, but I asked myself, I'm studying chemistry, I'm learning mathematics, physics, everything, but this, I don't know which you, I really, so I was just out of curiosity. I wanted to know more about, uh, let's say, uh, I, I even didn't know the name of uh, the subject. So I didn't know that there is forest market, there is uh, stock market. I, I wanted just to know which kind of field is it. Then, when I arrived here in, in Europe, I started with my uh, master's degree in food technology. Okay. So I get the possibility to, to choose a free subject, so uh, optional, optional subject. Mm -hmm. And then it was, so I saw something like budgeting. So I like everything related to budgeting. And then I saw something, another topic, International finance. Then right. I say, okay, international finance. Let me try this one instead of budgeting. Okay. And during the internal fina inter international finance, I was totally lost. I didn't know anything. <laughs> and the professor, he was an American professor, so from United States, and I was in Italy. So when he was talking about everything related to geopolitics, so economic, geopolitics, I said, wow, really, really interesting topic. So I have never missed a day of the, so I didn't even miss one day for the class. So every time I have to be there to listen to him, it was really amazing listening to the professor talking about the origin of currency, the uh, country, so most strongest country in the world, talking about um, US dollar, Canadian dollar, mm -hmm. European Union, so the Euro, Australian dollar. Then I said, wow, that is amazing. So I need to know more. Even after my semester, so after we finish everything, so I was still a beginner, so I didn't know everything. I said, okay, no problem. I have to, to go to, uh, in, to internet, trying to find more info. 
So my first approach was just to know more about the topic, not to, to make money or to do anything. I just wanted to be able to analyze the market like the guys that I used to see on TV. Mm-hmm. Then when I went on YouTube, there's a lot of content. So I got over him. Then I said, okay, this field is not for me. First of all, I have to study uh, finance. So mm-hmm. I don't have time to study all those things. I go back. I go back to my... <laughs> so I totally leave it. I went back to drop shipping. So I started watching videos about drop shipping, okay. drop buying shipping, yeah. some courses about drop shipping, mm-hmm. creating my website, selling my product. Then at some point during uh, the COVID situation, mm-hmm. so when there was a problem with uh, China with supply in 2020, mm-hmm. and there was problems, so it was, and I get so I got problem with uh, PayPal because clients were complaining that they are they are not receiving their product in time, all those things. So I have to stop. I went back on, so everything in 2020. So after learning about dropshipping, I went back on digital marketing because it was trending at that period. Mm -hmm. I went there, but I was like, I'm still, this is not my field. I'm I'm missing something. Then I went back again. I was, so I totally, I left dropshipping, I left, digital marketing and mm-hmm. I said I really need to learn something I really need to be focused on one thing and one day I was on YouTube again I got a push notification about this, some uh, lady or some girl in Asia she was talking again about a forest forest market and she was talking nicely she was really great I say Again, this topic, okay, so let me give it, get a try, give it again a try. Mm-hmm. Then I say, if I need to, to learn more about this topic, so does, does that mean I have to go back to university to learn everything about international finance or about finance? She said, so on her video, because I used to watch, she said, okay, the word of forest, is divided in let's say three or two parts. There is technical analysis, there is fundamental analysis, and there is also something. I did, at that time, I didn't know even the risk sentiment because she says there is technical analysis, there is fundamental analysis, and there is risk risk sentiment. I said, "Wow." Risk sentiment. Anyway, yes. yes, I have to to learn something. So I started watching all the video about technical analysis. I watch. I watch. Then she said she doesn't provide any any courses or any mentorship, so she did everything for free. But one part of me, so you know, when you are you are watching something on uh, on YouTube, when you finish, you get a new notification. So I will get the notification from someone who said I have made five k in thirty minutes. Oh. Then I will say, wow, interesting. Beware, beware. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Then I will say, wow, 5K in 30 minutes. That is really interesting to me. So I need to know more about it. I will, that, that I will click on the link. Then I will watch at the end. I will see a link for a master class where you have to pay Again, I will say, after you finish, you get again another notification from someone who said, perfect technical strategy to make you, you will be making at least 20K per month. I will click. Mm. So I will spend my time just clicking, watching strategy, 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 but at the end, you are not learning. So you are zero, you are not learning anything. Mm. Then I say, okay, I went back again to um, so that YouTube channel from that, for that lady, I watch again so many videos and one day. So the reason why I, I keep with that YouTube channel is because she doesn't say anything about how much money she, she made. Right. She always talk about 
technical analysis, fundamental analysis, um, risk sentiment. As she said, you cannot make money in forest market if you only base your skill uh, on technical analysis. You have to learn about uh, fundamental analysis. Mm -hmm. And she started, she did one video for 60 minutes. She was talking about fundamental when I saw you have to know GDP, interest rate, inflation. Mm -hmm. Then I said to me, no way, I don't have time to learn all these things. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so, I left everything. And one day again, I came back. So there was things. So when I, I leave, I will feel like I'm missing something. So I came back again. I continue washing, washing. And one day I got a notification. Then that notification, I thought that the, the notification came from her channels, but it was not the case. It was from you because when I click on that, uh, notification link. First of all, I I heard a male voice. I said, wow, interesting. Really, and the way you speak just catch my attention. So, okay. It was, if I remember very well, the title of the, the video was something about like a fundamental analysis and some, I don't remember very well, but there, there was fundamental analysis on the title. So when I click, I listen to your video, I watch. So after watching that video, I directly click to, to see your different content. I spend maybe two, three, four days, even a week <laughs> watching your videos. Really, I feel totally amazed by uh, the YouTube channel. First of all, I didn't hear anything related to how much money you made that make me feel okay this guy might be serious because he's not talking about money here he's talking about a skill that you have to master so something that you have to learn in order to be profitable in the market so i watch maybe a week then mm -hmm. i send you uh, an email right. when i send you an email you said i think we were maybe in october or november Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe October, and you said no, you are opening your um, your mentorship program only uh, in January from January 2021. Mm -hmm. Then I said, okay, I'm all in. So then you said, uh, so I went on your page, so the lengthy page. I, I don't know, but I feel like it was only in yearly method. So if I remember very well, there was not monthly or quarterly. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there was it. Then I remember I sent you again an email. If it is possible to to pay it monthly, you will say okay. There is no there is no problem. You can pay more monthly without any problem. I said okay, that mm -hmm. is fantastic. So this is all my background regarding. But first of all, I forgot to mention something. Mm -hmm. After watching all those videos on on YouTube. I got really, really overwhelmed. So I went on Udemy. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many courses I bought on Udemy. So if I show you my account on Udemy, oh. <laughs> at me, I bought a lot of courses about mm. uh, for it. So I bought Ishimoku strategy. Um, I bought uh, support and resistance. So a lot of things. I put, I have more than 10 courses wow. that I bought on Udemy. And after watching all of them, all of them, I feel like, no, there is something missing. So I, mm. I'm i missing something. All those courses, is the, they are totally different from what I used to see on, on TV. So because when you listen to people talking, so when you watch, for example, financial, financial show, mm -hmm. the way that people are talking, they are not talking about technical analysis, they are only talking about fundamentals. So, so something mm -hmm. totally from what I learned on, on Udemy. So then I said, maybe what I have to learn from you will give me that opportunity to be able to analyze the market like those guys on, on TV. So that is one of the many reasons why I, I, came, I came to you. But even when I came to you, I, I think I subscribed to five, 
five signals uh, provider. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I open five different accounts with them. So you always receive, uh, so you, you just receive a, a message telling you, okay, when to this buy, pair, when to sell. Yeah. What just right, click right. sell, just click buy. You even do not know anything. So you don't know what you are doing. And mm-hmm. one day I asked myself, if someone, if a friend asks me a question, what are you doing? Will I be able to tell them that I'm learning or I'm doing a forex market or, or no? Because if you are only taking signal from some people, you are not learning anything. So you are just losing your time and you are going around, around. So that was basically what I was doing. And at the end, you find yourself not going anywhere so you are losing your money because someone will give you signals by here for example give you take profit one take profit two take profit three and give you also stop loss but if the the trade go in the opposite direction no one is there to tell you please close your your trade so all those things so even when i i join your um, your mentorship program. If you realize very well, the first three months, three to four months, I was not there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was mm-hmm. still using those signal provider mm-hmm. and still focusing on my support and resistance strategy or Ishimoku strategy. Mm-hmm. But at the end, I say, so one day, I think that was, we were in April, I received a notification from my my credit card. Mm-hmm. So one trading or trading 180, something like that. Mm-hmm. So when I received a notification that I have been, so that I paid for the next uh, quarter, then I said to me, anyway, it's not expensive. So it's only one pound, one pound a day. So mm-hmm. this is not big money for <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah, it's affordable, right? It's affordable. Yes. Then I said, you subscribe for a mentorship program, but you are not learning it. So I asked myself, what is the reason? What is the main reason why you are not giving attention to something that you provide, that you subscribe yourself? And before subscribing, you also fill some, some questions because you always provide some questions to be filled. Mm-hmm. So we have to reply to some questions before you accept. Uh, to mentor us. So I asked myself, you subscribe for something, but you are not learning it. Of course, when I subscribe, I watch everything, all the video, but only the technical. So I didn't watch anything regarding the fundamental analysis. I was I watch only supply and demand, CPR, uh, stop on. Yeah. Then I say, okay, I know already the, the strategy. I went to try myself, no result. Then I came back in April. So from April, I said to me, you have to learn the, the, the strategy. So you have to, to be focused. If you really, really need to succeed in this field, you have to commit your time. So you have to, to stop playing. So from that time, I said, okay, just stop playing, start learning. So that's where I really start. Okay, Lawrence, you have to learn something. I have to rewatch all the video. When I finish with the technical part, I start with the fundamental analysis. It was still frustrating for me. I say there is too much to do. And one day, there is that master class. That master class that you did. I don't know his name, but maybe the guy is from South. Africa, something like that. You did the master class with him about. Oh, um, um, Drew. Was it uh, Drew? Was it Drew? I, I don't know. So you were talking about um, so GDP, inflation, interest rate. Mm-hmm. So, and you were saying there is no way someone can call himself as forex trader if he doesn't have any knowledge about what is so about fundamental analysis so if you don't if he doesn't know what is going on on the market 
you cannot call yourself as a forest trader. Ah, and, I know who that was. Yes, I know who that was. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. And from that day, so it's that video. So from that day, I say, okay, I have to to be able to call myself. Okay, Lawrence is a forex trader. So from that day, I said, no, I have to do things differently. So that is where I start to commit my time, sitting, learning, watching all the videos about. I don't know how many times I have watched that masterclass. So I watched, I came back again and again and again and again. And really, I feel really happy to, to watch it because after watching that video, now I start remember. So I start remembering what I used to to see on TV. Mm -hmm. so what I used to listen those analysts talking about: GDP is not great this quarter. Inflation is too low. Inflation is too high. So I start watching that master class. Made me remember. So all those video or all those news that I used to to watch on C on BBC or CNBC, something like that, mm -hmm. or Yahoo Finance. So, that, so now I say, okay, I start to I start learning. And there is something I used to listen people talking about uh, on TV. So I used to listen people talking or journalists saying that this central bank is hockey, this central bank is dovish, this central bank is tightening. So when you you know exactly when those terms means mm -hmm. that you are really happy. So you, you are happy because mm -hmm. you are able to explain to someone else what is going on mm -hmm. to the market. So basically, that is where I'm coming from. So it was just out of curiosity, curiosity that I became interested in the financial market. So, Wow. What, what a journey and what a story. And um uh you know there's 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 definitely a lot to kind of there's so many points you made that I was like I've been there I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about because you know just 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 one of one of the points that you made was for example um when you said that when you were still trading with me you had about four or five uh signal strikes yeah um, signals right and it's only when you decided to really focus on what it was that I was teaching. And I went through the exact same uh, experience with my mentor when, you know, I uh, uh, was made, being mentored by Mark uh, Chapman, uh, my mentor and, uh, and, and good friend of mine. And he, you know, at the beginning, I was doing the exact same thing. I was still trading and mixing and matching strategies. And then one day I said to myself, either I'm going to go 100% into what Mark is saying, or I'm not, right? It's, it's one, of the, one of the really kind of detrimental things, and it's a natural thing that traders do, is you think that you can mix and max strategies and make your own strategy, right? And then, and, and there's other things that come into it as well, because, you know, you're trying to make as much money in as quick time as possible. And if there's no trade today, but you saw someone else making money, then, you know, then it's almost like you're, you're FOMOing in because you've got, I could have traded that strategy and then I got that strategy. So I totally understand where you was, but what really improved your trading was focus right and following the process yeah exactly it was not really it was not easy but if you really really want to to succeed you don't have choice you yeah. have to to sit and to commit the time to learn something if not absolutely absolutely you will just be going around around and the end yeah I think. exactly and i say this to traders is you know, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line, right? So if this is where you are, A, yeah, and where you want to be is Z, yeah? The straightest, the, the quickest and the fastest point and the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. 
Yeah. Now this Z might represent, you know, your trading results. Yeah. Now, if you are constantly going off the, the you know, the, 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 the subject, you're learning about this strategy, that strategy, you may never get to Z. You may never get to success because you're not following the path that, you know, the mentor or the, um, the course that you're trading is, is telling you you're mixing and matching strategies. And every time you mix and match a strategy and you don't follow the process, you're getting further and further away if, of course, that trading strategy is successful. No, nobody knows until, you know, you start to, um, you know, you start to trade it, right? Because anyone can show you results. There's a hundred thousand traders on there that would show you that they made, you know, a million pound in, in five minutes, right? But how many traders actually do it, right? It's all right if I do it, but can that translate over to you? That's the, you know, yeah. <laughs> because that's what, that's what really matters, right? You know yeah. what I mean? But, but a very interesting in, in, in your journey and your natural inclination to fundamental analysis. So how have you, um, I've seen you come leaps and bounds, right? I've seen you, the, the change in, in, in your uh, participation and the, the questions that you ask and the, the charts that you post and the information, the fundamental information. And I, I thank you so much. It's, you're a very value valued and valuable member of the community because you're 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 really top notch now i can see it you know what i mean in, in in what you provide so if you were to say to somebody why they should learn fundamental analysis or what are the benefits of learning fundamental analysis together with the technical analysis which we'll get into again in a sec um what would your answer be to that so oh, really, really for me, mm -hmm. really, so when I, I always imagine myself, even at the beginning when I, I joined the master, the mentorship program, mm -hmm. I was like running for 20 pips, 15 pips, 30 <laughs> pips, pips maximum. <laughs> so I remember one day, one day, Maybe we were in June, something like that. We were buying, uh, that maybe that was in May or April, May, mm -hmm. something like that. We were buying uh, Euro because Euro was, was coming uh, back from lagging. So since they were, they were lagging regarding vaccine rollout, all those right. things. Yeah. So when they, start, they started coming back, we were buying Euro at that time. And I came with during a weekly uh, mm -hmm. video as you always do during uh, the week. Yeah. I said something, I comment on the chat that I closed a profitable trade of, I think 20, 25 pips. <laughs> I remember that day you laugh at me and you said, we are not here for scalping. So, <laughs> <laughs> you said 25 pips is, a scalping, are you a scalper or, or what? I say, I say, I say to myself, but 25 pieces, a lot of fees to me because I remember I used to watch video where people were chasing five peep, peeps, 10 oh. peeps. Ah, so, I've done that too. I've done that <laughs> as well. Yeah. So when you said we are not here for scalping, so we are here to make at least 80, 100, 150 peeps. And that day I said, but this guy, are you serious when you say something like 80, 100, 150, <laughs> you can make something like that? <laughs> I asked myself that question. And you said, no, we are here for to make at least 80, 100, 200, even three, four, five. Then I said, okay, I really want to reach that level. So that was one of my, my goals. So I set a goal. I said, okay, Lawrence, you need or you must be able to meet be at least 100, 150, 200 people. And you cannot really, yeah, it is possible. Maybe you can do it by, by chance. If you are lucky enough, you go, you, you only use technical analysis. And that day, the market goes your way. So, so you, you are lucky, you don't, you don't really, really know what you are doing. So mm. you only get a setup, tell me you buy. Okay, mm. you just click buy, at the end, you find yourself making 
80, 90 pips, but you are not confident. You don't know if this the trade can go as far as possible. So when I started, you said something, you said, if I have the necessary information about a particular currency or a particular trade, I will have hold the trade for two, three, even one month, if, if nothing has changed. Then I said, okay, let's see. If I really commit my time to know more about the process, maybe, so I always use maybe at that time. I say maybe I will also be able to do like, like you, because I remember at that time that there were people making the same thing, like 180. Mm -hmm. I said, I said to me, I have to be able to do to do the same. And you said at the end, fundamental analysis or fundamental event give you a trade direction. So in the short term, everything can happen, but in the long term, we know where we are going. And if everything is aligned perfectly, so you have all the fundamental analysis telling you, okay, you have to buy this particular currency. And the technical also came and give you more confidence about the trade. By confidence, I mean, give you the perfect setup, even if there is not 100 perfect setup, but if it gives you the perfect setup and you buy it, just hold it for a long time until maybe you see some something happening uh, to that particular currency, something happening and telling you, okay, we were doing great, but there is something happened and this event is going to change the fundamental analysis of that particular country. So that is where maybe you might think, okay, is it something that is going to last for a long time or is it just something that is going to last for, I don't know, a week or two weeks? So you have basically an idea so you know exactly where you are going. You know if you have to close your trade or you have to change your prices about a particular currency or not. So fundamental analysis really, really give me that opportunity to, to hold my trade for, for a long time. So you have to dig, to read, read. It's, at the beginning, it was difficult. To be honest, it was difficult for me uh, learning. So it, you, stru you structure something very clear on the master. So on the Discord, there is every country like Europe, uh, United States, Australia, uh, Australia, Canada, Switzerland. Then every day you put information there. And for me, I was asking myself, I don't have time to sit, to read all the information about Europe, all the information about United States of America, all the information about Australia. So I said, no, I don't have uh, this time. You know what I was doing at the beginning before I fully replied to your question? I was so waiting for you. I will say, okay, since Leon, Leon is doing everything for me, so he is doing uh, every weekend Leon did uh, Leon is going to provide or he's going to make a video about uh, so every weekend I forgot the name so you always do fund yeah fundamental analysis for the weekend yes so I will just stop reading about news I will just came, uh, come and watch what you did on Saturday or Sunday and yeah. then full stop so matter. when you will say it I am buying, for example, this pair, this pair. I will automatically <laughs> take a, a piece of paper and write, okay, Leon is buying this pair, this pair. Therefore, Lores is buying this pair, this pair, this pair. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I was doing 100% what I'm telling you. So I, mm -hmm. so you are doing the job for me. I was saying, okay, I don't have to commit my time. Leon is already there. He is doing my, my job. So mm -hmm. I will just come here maybe Saturday evening and mm -hmm. watch what Leon did. Okay, this is also my, what I have to follow. Mm -hmm. But at some point, you said something. What happened if tomorrow I'm not, or if tomorrow I decide, for example, to close the mentorship program. And that day, really, that day something changed mm -hmm. in my mind. So when you say that and I say, okay, that is 
very, very interesting point. I asked myself, what happened if Leon really decide to stop doing the mentorship program? Does that mean I have to restart everything by zero? Because if he decides, for example, to close this mentorship program, I really, I didn't learn anything. So I will be zero. Like before, nothing has changed. I was just here playing, losing my time or turning around. So when you say that, I said to me, okay, good. I have to learn something in case. <laughs> you never know. In case you decide, for example, okay, I don't have time again to be here every day, every Wednesday or Thursday for the weekly call and every weekend for the fundamental analysis. Mm. I said, I really will have to do something different. So then I started giving my time to learn about fundamental analysis, so to read. And at the beginning, it was difficult, but at some point, really, it became so easy to me, really easy. So when I read an article about a particular country or particular currency, Mm -hmm. it seems like, okay, easy to understand, easy to know where this specific central bank is going, easy to know at which level a particular currency is or a particular central value is, so which is the idea or which is the theme for these central banks. So I started, so when I read and I saw, okay, this central bank is somehow turning hawkish. This central bank is neutral. This central bank is still dovish. So this central bank is on the holding uh, state. Then when you read and you start listening and understanding what is going on, you really do not know how happy I, re- I-, I was at that time. So when I read something <laughs> and I realized that I knew where I'm going or I understood what this article is talking about, yeah. I was really happy. And I said, thank you very much. Because if I didn't listen to you or if I didn't, if you didn't mention that phrase that you have to sit and to learn something because there is no a guarantee that tomorrow I will be here. Or maybe I might, something might happen and I decide to close this mentorship program. So really for that, I will always say thank you, thank you very much for that because this is the phrase that really changed something in my mind. And I was also seeing in the group when I will see, for example, Jabret, I will see Ken, I will see Samaita, I will see, yeah, so many. So there were also some people really active at some point. So when I will see all of them giving the um, opinion or idea for something, and I will ask myself, how? How is it possible that they are all giving a, a point above a particular trade and where I am, I'm not able to do the same. And I was, I didn't ask any question at that time. I say the only thing that I have to do to be able to, to reach that level is to read, to learn, and to do exactly what you always said. So we have to commit our time and you will sometimes you say it during the weekend if you are too too busy during the week, at least you have the weekend to try to recover what you didn't do during the week. So you have to read what happened during the week and if there is something new or not and plan your next week. I started step by step, step by step. But now when I I spend a day without reading anything. I feel like I lost something. <laughs> like you're behind, isn't it? Like you're behind on it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I yeah. have to read every day. And for me, it's too easy. Yes, at the beginning, it was difficult. But now it's really, really too easy to me to understand. And at the beginning, I was saying, okay, first of all, because uh, English is not my primary language, I will say, first of all, so I will use English like a, a barrier to me. I will say it anyway. Right. I don't have time to sit 
and study or learn English. So it's not my language and everything is only in English. So therefore, it's not for me. <laughs> mm. But from all the languages, so like I speak more than four languages, there oh. is only one that I didn't sit and study or learn like the other languages. Right. So I will always say, okay, everything is only in English. So I don't have time to spend my time here learning all those things because they mm. are in English. I will firstly try to translate. Mm -hmm. French, for example, or Italian or German, I feel we try to translate and come back to English, but at some point I say you have to read everything and you have to understand. But if you don't read, so by reading, I don't mean like two hours, three hours, maybe at the beginning you have to commit to one hour, but at some point it's really, really easy. You read a full article, maybe in 10 minutes, yeah. and you on the suit or you understand exactly what is going on and for that so i that's why i always say thank you to the group because where i am for me i can also see something totally different so i can see that me too i am improving so i'm not the same lawrence from the beginning no i'm some someone totally different um i also feel like i need to know more so I have to read every day, read every day, because I really want to reach a level of those guys in TV <laughs> to be able to explain something to someone and that person and understand what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's 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 amazing, mate. And um, you know the fact that you know you you've you've overcome the language barrier. You you know you worked so hard. If, you know you speak four languages. And the work that you've put in, right, into understanding the fundamental analysis and seeing the benefits of fundamental analysis, as you said, you know, you were going from scalping to now, you know, making hundreds of pips. And I've seen, you know, some of the trades you've taken and, you know, they've been amazing trades, right? Mm. And, um, and uh, it's just an amazing thing to, to, to see and now to hear um you know you the experience that you've gone through and understanding the fundamentals right and how um important it is um into understanding how you get into trades and how you get out of trades and the fact that you can hold trades for longer it gives you a lot more confidence in holding trades and you can predict moves and levels before you know um the move happens not obviously 100 percent at the time but you have a lot more confidence knowing what the central bank is going to do like you said whether they're hawkish or dovish and selecting pairs and it, it all come together and um you know that's that's fantastic and one of the things i guess that puts lots of traders off from um from from fundamental analysis is that they think it's too hard or it's too time consuming but anything worth learning is worth putting in the work right you have to put exactly. in the work nothing if, if you if people if traders are going to come into this thinking that this is going to be easy and you're going to learn this in a week lawrence what would you say to them welcome you are really, <laughs> you are really i would just say welcome because after two or after one month, two months, you will face the reality. I forgot to mention something. You yeah. know, even when I I joined your mentorship program, I thought that you also provide signals. So, <laughs> so oh. I thought, but I remember you said, so after joining, you said, here, I am not a, a financial advice, advisor, so I do not make a trade goal. Then I I formatted my mind. I said, okay, here there is no signals, so I have to do everything myself. Exactly. So if someone has to join the group or the mentorship uh, program, there is only one thing to do. If you really want to succeed, there is no two way. There is only one way. You have to to study. Mm -hmm. It is not possible to, to get a, a degree from the college without committing a time. Exactly. So that is it's not possible. It's not possible. So. That is not possible, right? Mm. Trading is probably one of the hardest 
skill sets to learn you know in the world right you've got the greatest minds in the market making money and what gives us the right as retail traders and this was told to me you know what gives us the right to just come in and start trading support and resistance and start making money right it's an insult to the people that um to, to the great minds that trade the fundamental analysis the big banks you know who are who have got such high level iq and experience and run the market that you know these retail traders are going to come in and just learn you know some sort of technical analysis and then they're going to make money and you know what i mean it doesn't work like that it really doesn't but um but 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 again shifting gears i guess a little bit um, to, I guess, uh, technical analysis. So um, technicals, we cover, you know, various strategies, right? So we cover um, supply and, yeah, capture pain relief, um, stop, stop hunt trading, yeah, stop hunt trading, and we cover um, su uh, supply and demand, daily, daily supply and demand zones, right, technically. And you said something earlier as far as, you know, you, you try to do just the technical analysis strategies and, and at one point and, you know, they, they didn't work for you. Right. And that's not to say, by the way, that that the technical strategies don't work by themselves because, you know, they can and they and, and, and they do. But you what you want to do is combine them with the fundamentals. Yeah, yeah. Because, exactly. because because that is really where you can choose the direction. So a lot of traders will tend to buy at support or buy at demand zones, not realizing that the fundamentals and the risk sentiment is actually against them. So if you're in a trade where you're where you have no idea that one central bank is hiking rates and the other one is cutting rates and you're buying the currency that is cutting rates, you're going to get slaughtered all day long, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. <laughs> exactly. So when I say that uh, <clears throat> I learned the technical and it didn't work for me, it's because what I was doing after watching all your videos about supply and demand and demand zone, CPR, stop hunt, what I did, I went on, on my chart, I just marked all those zones, supply zone, demand zone, and mm -hmm. when price will reach, the demand zone I will buy when probably read the supply <laughs> zone. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> so that is why I said it didn't uh, work for me just because I was doing both at the same time. So I will make money. I remember I was really making money. So buying at the demand zone and when we reach the supply zone, I will send. So I was doing exactly right. this. Then at some point I said, no, it's like I'm making money going up. Then I'm losing all this money trying to going down, yes. To exactly. Short, but it's just going, still going up. I don't know what is going on because in my mind, as you know, here it means price have to change the direction. But yeah, if you don't know anything about fundamental, okay, you are just going to be here a long time for nothing. Absolutely. So combining fundamentals with the technicals is really essential. Right. You, you haven't got a complete strategy, really. And I say strategy, but you haven't got a, a complete approach to the markets and, you know, consistent trading unless you really do, you know, both. So let's get into, you know, your last, you know, uh, trade, maybe last profitable trade or maybe your biggest trade that you remember. Um, what would that be? And, you know, talk us through it from. Um, you know, the, the, from the from the trade idea, from the fundamentals um, down to you know the technicals. So, what pair, uh, you know, was your last profitable trade, or maybe your last, uh, or your maybe your biggest trade to date? So, I always said, still now, I'm still, uh, I'm still holding. For example, I have a couple of pair. Uh, pair for example, like uh, Canadian. Japanese yen, so I'm still in. Since, oh, you're still in that one? Wow. Yeah, I'm still in. I don't know, maybe since uh, you are 22nd of December. Ah, yeah, you're 21st in Japanese. of December. Brilliant. Yeah. I'm still in also in New Zealand Japanese yen, but the main reason are very, very simple, maybe simple to us because we know already what is going on here. So mm. I'm still in for. New Zealand, Japanese, and can uh, cut 
Japanese yen, for example. All right, we let's... all know. Go on. Yeah, so we we all already know the reason why we are buying uh, Canadian dollar. Uh, okay, so, so dollar. Right, so 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 let's so let's go into, for example, we'll focus on the Canadian yen, yeah, because that's a that's a very interesting one. So we had at one point, I guess, a bit of a demand zone there. Yeah. And um, and so from from fundamentally, why were you looking at this pair? So what was it about the Canadian dollar that you wanted to be a buyer of? And why did you want to sell the Japanese yen? Yeah, first of all, where we are. So during uh, fundamentally Canadian is a currency that we have to to be buying because he, he came a long way from a pandemic situation where yeah. everything was somehow, I would say, somehow slow. So I would say all of them were in somehow a recession because all of them were in, they got interest rates so they, and they introduced quanti quanti quantitative easing to help businesses. So all of them, all those currencies were in a very difficult situation. And after the pandemic, so we realized there, there are some economies we were really, really doing great, so recovering from the pandemic. And everything that were lost during the pandemic was somehow at the pre-pandemic level. So we can see that uh, employment data were, were going very positive for uh, Canada. GDP were also going well for, for Canada and we also have inflation was going up. And mm -hmm. when all those um, events or when all those data are aligned to the same direction, so they give us an edge, so we know that okay, this uh, particular currency is going to, to recover, mm -hmm. and we just try to pair the strongest currency with the weakest currency. So the currency we are still lagging to having problem regarding the economic growth, and they are still uh, in, in the recession or contraction phase. So we sure. just have to buy currency. Who are, so all those currency who are performing very very well, we have to buy them again. So and really not performing. And at that time, still today, for example, so we can see uh, Canada already recover everything before mm -hmm. the uh, the pandemic situation. So they recover everything. Mm -hmm. So they are growing and they are also thinking about. Uh, increasing the, the interest rate because they believe that where we are, it's possible for businesses to survive even if they increase interest rate. Right. Yeah, but in right. the opposite side, uh, we have, for example, in Japan, uh, okay, they still now, they haven't recovered what's happened during the pandemic, so they are still lagging compared mm -hmm. to Canada or compared to New Zealand, so they are still behind. They are trying to, they are fighting. Mm -hmm. They are doing all their best to recover, but the journey is really long. So there is a huge divergence between those countries. So an uh, interest rate is really low, for example, if you have to compare um, the two currencies. So if you, we just want to buy a currency according to the interest rate, Canada has the highest interest rate and Japan has the lowest interest rate. So mm -hmm. even if someone don't know about GDP, uh, if that person just want to base his trade, his trade idea about interest rate, that person will buy him Canadian dollar. Of course, we have also to take into consideration if there is a global fear or global optimism. Uh, mm -hmm. So I didn't pronounce very well. So if there is a global fear or if people are seeking risk because they believe that, okay, tomorrow will be bright, so there will be light. So risk, risk, risk on or risk of sentiment? Yeah, risk on or risk of sent sentiment. So when mm -hmm. in theory during risk on sentiment, we have to buy in 
commodities the currency because the market is uh, is growing and people are optimistic they spend more so then everything seems to be normal we have to buy risks on currency but if there is something like the current situation where people are afraid okay there is a global fear that is where we might for people who are interested we might looking buying for example japanese yen or swiss franc but that depend so that is the main reason why i was buying a canadian dollar because uh, they are really ahead of japan regarding mm-hmm. so if you compare the two economic situation they are really really advanced yeah so so to recap what you were looking at was really divergences right so divergences in gross domestic product from the pandemic Can, uh, canada were started to recover a lot sooner um inflation um um divergence as well uh from an interest rate divergence where the central bank is looking to high rates and uh, in canada bank of canada were and japan were you know not looking to high rates at all and even just to, from a um an interest rate you know divergence in a sense that one is higher than the other as well canada i think it's 0.25 i guess yeah, i think yeah, the uh, Jap- and japan are at you know minus 0.1 so even if you are looking at where to put your money if you're looking at risk on sentiment you're going to put your money in the higher yielding um currency versus you know the the lower yielding currency yep. um so fundamentally there were so many divergences and that's what we do at trading 180 is identify the divergences right the fundamental divergences what's going up or what's potentially going down and then we look for trades in the direction so this trade here what was the actual setup do you remember the setup that you took was it a cpr or was it just a daily demand zone or was it was it even a stop hunt because there was a, there's maybe a couple there yeah it was i would say three of them so all of them yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was it i can see it there was a combination because i again i wanted to take this this is, this is a trade that i missed on because i said you know to 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 guys in the group i did say that i i generally don't trade the last week of christmas yeah. i'll try not to trade the last week of christmas and it could be a bit volatile even though i saw this setup i did say that i personally wouldn't be trading this and i know i know personally you know the the trade setup but let's uh, walk through it to a to a to a certain degree not not everything of course but just for the uh, watchers on here um let's uh, just go through maybe one of the setups that you know we had you had confluence on right okay so, so which so you had <laughs> what 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 which one was it that that you would say it was it was the dominant um reason which technical setup was it that you thought, thought was the dominant reason yes technical one so we can first of all we can see that there is in a level for example where level traders so if you Zoom in. You, no, no. I mean, okay. If you zoom out, mm-hmm. and we try to yes, uh, to identify this area where level trade yes, level trader, we can notice that at some point yes, then level trader went short because this big red candle, you no, know, uh, at your left oh, around around here. No, uh, to the right. to the right yeah, that yes one. that one yeah. yeah so if you go to lower time frame we will see that that big kind of for example make trader going short because they believe a level area has been broke right. so they put their money going short and mm-hmm. they were capture over there so they in the short and then price just suddenly turn and when it came back we have uh, so we always say cpr so mm-hmm. capture pain relief so when price go up and when price came back we were supposed mm-hmm. to to buy that currency because we know that people who also bought there so people yeah. who are selling for example japanese yen uh, they will get they will be looking to to get out mm-hmm. at that uh, support area Mm-hmm. and we also we are also in a demand zone mm-hmm. and at that moment everything was aligned so there was um, uh, RS, uh, rsi divergence there was volume so they were over yeah. oversold yeah yeah 
and there was also volume diverge divergence. So all of them, and they there were, were people ready. We were yeah. just waiting their uh, level trade, uh, looking to be long mm -hmm. in that area. So mm -hmm. we as so we know already the CPR, so the capture pain relief. Mm -hmm. We know we are looking to to buy uh, can, uh, cat, uh, so Canadian dollars. We are looking to buy Canadian dollar, and there is also people who only trade supply and demand. They are also looking to buy Canadian dollar over there, and mm -hmm. people who only trade support and resistance are also looking to buy mm -hmm. Canadian over there. So I use that opportunity to be long. So I enter long position, and still now I'm still holding the trade, so not afraid. And if you also see, I remember before. If I was still the same Lawrence as before, if mm. you go ahead, you will see this those two big red candles. So if, no, to to the right. So okay. uh, where we are, for example, yes, oh, okay, yeah. those two big red candles. Mm -hmm. I will. So if I was still the same Lawrence, I will have closed my trade because I will say <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and if you see, we are also. Uh, on a level of resistance and yep. there's really accurate area of resistance. So if I was still the same guy, I would have closed my, my trade after seeing those two big red candles. But when mm -hmm. I saw it, I said, anyway, I don't care because mm -hmm. I know that we, we are supposed to be buying Canadian dollar and and those two red candles, maybe they can pull back to a, a, an area where we are also looking maybe to another demand area, or maybe it can also turn to be a CPR, no one mm -hmm. knows. So I said, anyway, even if it the price pull back, I'm looking to add more position. Right. I, I would say just, just, just be careful, though, on this trade, simply because, you know, we're coming to the top of the range, do you know what I mean, on, 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 on that. And you definitely want to look to take some profit, of course, right? You know, you definitely want to take some profit, Lawrence. I always say, you know, at least 80% of the area try to take some, some profit because we had that incident today, right, with the Aussie, uh, Aussie CAD where it literally pinged off that 80% level. So I'm hoping that people who were taking that Aussie CAD short managed to take some profit there, right? Definitely look to take some profit. But so far, do you, do you know your entry and where your stop loss was on this trade? Do you, do you yeah. put your hand? So the entry, if I, let me check if I remember the entry. Let's check. As I enter exactly since everything were uh, so we we had three possibilities to enter the trade either CPR mm -hmm. or, or a bit of a stop, on, right? As either, but I enter here so that the red candle we were exactly let me yeah. What see. what level was it? Don't worry about the candle so much. Just what level? Yes, eighty seven, eighty seven, seventy five. 87.75 right there. And what was your potential stop loss? Yes, when I, you know, I, it was 20 pips, the 20 pips stop loss. 20 pips stop loss was something yeah, from around there. So 20 pips stop loss right there? Yep, exactly. 20. No, but I, I mean, behind, uh, you see. Oh, 20 pips beyond that one. Right. Okay. So that was there. So 20 pips beyond there. Okay. So it was there so that was where your stop loss was and then your uh your entry was at 87 87 75 right there excellent 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 so and I now closing of that red candle and you're currently up seven to one yeah seven to one on that trade now again you want to you know just trail your stop up and stuff like that just lock in some profits but this at the maximum would have been what maybe an eight and nine there yeah, about an 8.5 to one you know so that again great trade did you manage to enter into multiple positions by the way or just one so i did something i enter exactly same uh same place i enter two positions so i already closed ah, uh, one position brilliant, brilliant. 
Brilliant. So you entered two positions at the same place. As I always, uh, I generally tend to say, you know, try to get into more than uh, one position. So you you took profit on on one of the positions positions where? Yes, uh, that one. I think when we reached something like uh, it was three hundred. If you is what three hundred pips. About three hundred pips. So somewhere, probably one second. Let me just measure this. So from probably from here to here. So three hundred pips is about there. There. Yes. 300 pips imagine um, that eh? and whoever would have thought you were going from scalping 20. exactly you were going from scalping <laughs> so, I 300 pips 300 and I remember I said at the beginning that my goal was also to achieve at least 100 to 200 because no more 25 or 15 pips mm. So Excellent. I'm really happy, really happy to be in this uh, because for me it's like a family. So we yeah. are we are sharing our tray, idea, everything that we know. It's really big family, and we learn a lot. I'm I'm sure hundred percent. If I was not here, mm -hmm. I don't know if I will be able to hold a trade for three hundred people, one hundred people. I really do not know. Nah, I, I, do you know what? It's funny because that's that is a question that I tend to ask as far as. Do you think you would have maybe figured this out? And then maybe the chances, maybe you might have figured it out, but the chances are before meeting me or maybe never meeting me, you know, the knowledge that you've acquired, it might have taken you a lifetime to figure it out. Maybe never, right? Um, exactly. To, to, to figure this out. But this is part and parcel of mentoring. And I say the same thing about my mentor, you know, who I will forever be grateful to because he's the reason why, you know, I'm able to, you know, teach you guys, right? And you guys also profit from, you know, the teachings from what he's showed me and I've been profiting. So it's about passing that information on and um, and well done. Like you said, you're on, you, you've got, you know, 300 pips on one position. You're still in another position. You're in that, was it the New Zealand yen as well, right? Yeah. You know, take, 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 taking some profit off of that one as well. So again, and I've seen these trades, like I said, I've, you know, just not um, as far as uh, I've seen you post these trades well ahead of time. You know, you've seen the levels, you're very accurate. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very impressed. You've come leaps and bounds and uh, it's been a bit of a long journey, but you know, you've done it. And now again, the question is, is if I wasn't around, you know, can you trade by yourself? Can you, are you an independently profitable trader? I will really say it. Today, I'm able to, to trade by myself. Brilliant. Uh, if I was not here in this, uh, for me, like this family, I really don't think that I will be able to, to do it. And there is something, I don't know if I'm, permitted to say it or not there is something i remember i i had one account that i i blew that account when i was still using those signals mm -hmm. so and it was uh, remaining something like two two euro 30 cents so i said to me i have to make a, a very like so i have to set a goal i will never put again money inside that account i will only use that two euros to, uh, 50 cents to grow <laughs> that account to a level that i would never imagine mm. so from that time i think we were at the end of this year maybe from october something like that mm -hmm. so from october to today 12th of january so two euro 50 cents the account is already 100 euro 45 145 Hold on, hold on. Let me just pause there. You went from three euros, yeah, yep. to over a hundred dollars in that account. In that account. Fan all I using, think. all using what you've learned with trading one eighty. Only using fundamental analysis. So one I learned here. So only one direction. So I don't have to change my mind. Buy here when there is a supply. Sell mm -hmm. no. Only using uh, what you teach, so nothing more. I don't want to go anywhere looking for something, and I don't uh, over trade or using big looks, uh, lot, um, 
make size. lot size. Yeah. You know, the, the smallest one. And I took my time. I'm, so I'm not chasing money. I remember one day you said, um, chase, uh, you say something like, chase mastery, not money. So I'm not chasing, yeah. like I have to make benefit or I have to make, I know that I'm learning. And you always say something. If you are not able to, so maybe you will rephrase it, but you always say it. If you are not able to manage, for example, let's say 100 pounds or 100 euro, you will never be able to manage 10,000 or 20,000. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that was told to me, right? That was exactly told to me. If you can't manage peanuts, then how are you going to exactly. manage coconuts, right? If you can't manage three pounds, how are you going to manage three, you know, 30,000 pounds or 300,000 pounds? So it's, it's a, it's, it's, you crawl, then you walk, then you run. And if you can do this at $3 and turn it into a hundred pounds, you know, it's possible to do the same thing, although your risk starts to get a bit smaller. And it, by the way, what was your risk percentage on, on you know, per trade? You weren't over-risking, were you? You weren't over-leveraging on that, were you? It's true that at some point I increased, but just because capital also increased. And right. okay. when I have the perfect setup and I believe, okay, there is nothing like believe here, but I somehow believe that way we are, Mm -hmm. there is oversaw there is uh, uh, everything is aligned everything the CPR. Perfect so i said okay why not try to increase a little bit the lot size right so okay then, and and i guess at that at that uh price you know you would have had to have kind of um you know over leveraged even though we do not do that typically you know at, at trading 180 i must uh, emphasize anyone who's listening to this don't think that this is typical as well and that you've got to basically over leverage and uh, things like that but in general it was really good trading really good risk management in a sense that you know you took the a1 setups and uh, you did what you had to do with with the uh, with the risk but you know, you made it work and you trusted the process. And that is the key thing. And you've seen the results. And that has been over the space of what time? How long? Since yes, from October. So October. the end of September still today. Okay. And we're in January. So that's been about three, four months, right? Yes. Knowing that there are also risk of sentiment. So sometimes you also lose. If there was not sometime mm. risk of sentiment, yeah, maybe yeah. I will be very far. <laughs> but 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 we know now that risk of sentiment pushes prices to where we want to be what yes. buyers right yes, yes exactly yes. so uh so lawrence i'm gonna wrap up there and uh one last final question to anybody listening to this podcast and i thank you and listening to this interview and i thank you very much for a listening and you know for you lawrence for your really in-depth experience what would you say to somebody who was maybe sitting on the fence, was undecided about joining Trading 180? I will only say something very, very simple. Just give it a try and you will witness the result yourself. Give it a try. Commit time to study, not to chase money. So firstly, chase the skill because if you master the skill, you can achieve whatever you want. So commit your time give it a try and you will see the result is very simple so like me I, I, at the beginning i said is it possible I, I will be able one day to be to make let me say to make money here but i'm really happy really really happy because i'm learning something very useful to me i can use it everywhere mm, exactly yeah. you can use it anywhere all you need is a computer and an internet connection, right? Simple. Mm, you can trade anywhere in the world. Brilliant. Thank you, Lawrence, so much for the interview. Really appreciate it. And um, again, to everyone who's uh, listening, um, again, we are open for a limited time only. And um, again, I like to keep my class really small, as Lawrence knows. Um, you can't just join whenever you want to join, you know, I, <laughs> the class has got to be, you know, and I do that on purpose simply because, 
you know, like a class, you don't just join school at any single time during the year, right? You've got, you know, certain intakes. And so it works better for me. And I can give the, you know, everyone who comes in the attention that they need, everyone can start off at a certain place, etc. So um, yeah, I'm gonna literally, uh, uh, the, the, you know, there's a limited time um, for the uh, for the opening for this for this uh, intake. I don't know when the next intake will be. And if you're listening, and the intake is still open, then um, like, like Lauren says, give it a give it a try. But there's going to be a lot of hard work. Don't think that you're going to just learn this in um, you know a, a, a day or two or three, or even master it within you know a day or two or three. Be committed. And um, as well, listen to the other interviews that I have with uh, with Ken and uh, Jar Bread, and uh, we've got more interviews to come. And they all, every you know, profitable trader says pretty much the same exact thing. It's going to take time, it's going to take energy, it's going to take you know work. But once you commit to it and follow the process, you'll see. You should see the results. I say you will, but not not to be certain because who knows. But generally, you have a high degree of uh, of seeing you know the results. And if they can do it you can do it. You just got to follow the process, but thank you very much. Um, Lawrence and, uh, blessings to you. And, uh, I will speak to you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much. So everything care. is for you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, man. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.